Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a bit of a technical issue. So I know that there were some, I did uh, schedule, uh, of course, this live stream. And for some reason on my end, I have encountered so many things trying to stop me from doing this. And so if you're, if you're getting this, please look and, uh, and just, uh, whew, I, I'm so sorry. So please, everybody, whoever was there, switch over to here, okay? Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to be able to, and I have to apologize, too, because I have, uh, I have been trying to uh, pray so much, and there, the Spirit has just been so strong in me. And I ended, I was going to try to, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I was saying, Guy. I I don't know. It would not allow me to do the stream. It, it would not tell me. It would not do it. And then it it, it said, deleting stream. I'm like, God, are you kidding me? So I knew that the enemy was just definitely on top of this uh uh my june everybody I, hello and please if if anybody was on the the scheduled stream was there please come over here and let them know uh so this is this is what happened i had no control over that so i do apologize uh, <coughs> and yet there was also another issue because you can probably hear it so when I was tr uh, trying to hear uh, from the Lord and I was uh, preparing, I, I, I didn't know if the Lord wanted me to say something because I didn't know if, because this is what I'm doing, brothers and sisters. I wait until I hear from the Lord. This isn't just something that I do just to be able to try to get views or anything like that. It is me being prompted to be able to say what the Lord is giving me to say to you. My Abba is saying, Wayne, I want you to do this. And I say, yes, Dad, I, I'm going to do it. And so when I decided I was going to do this yesterday, suddenly I came down with uh, influenza type C. Uh, I think that uh, we all know what that is and so i do apologize but i was not going to uh i was not going to stop this and what that really told me is it hearkened back to my uh to my salvation experience when my wife denise at the time had uh told me that i needed to to consider if this was by the devil. And uh, if, if anyone hasn't seen my uh, afterlife testimony, I encourage you to do that. But it was, I was miraculously healed. I was miraculously healed because I didn't look at my circumstances. I went ahead and did what the Lord was prompting me to do. Oh, praise you, praise you, Alma, praise you, Alma. Uh, I went ahead and did what my Abba had said for me to be able to do. And so I'm doing that now. What are we going to talk about today? And, and this was, you know, it follows on to what I had uh, done in my last teaching where I have, I really think that I have clearly been able to show, well, let me take that word clearly out. I, I, that's one of the things that I, I don't do that uh, in, in my legal stuff or anything like that. I am, I'm always skeptical of anyone who uses that term. Clearly, you can see X or Y. No. And uh, that, that it just means typically that, that there's, that there's something they're trying to puff themselves up. They think that they know, and, and I just I just don't like to do that. If anyone is moved and prompted by the Spirit, by any of these seeds that are being planted, then praise God. Praise God for all of you. This, this is his message. This isn't about me. This is about him. 
and it's about his family and it's about his family, the bride uh, part of his family that's going to be taken here very soon. Well, when I was talking about the clearly, that really just discusses there are so many people that just have a difficulty with there being either multiple gatherings, multiple harvest, and, and I'm not going to apologize for that. I mean, I, I think that the, the Bible shows that uh, very well, very well, and, and in several places. I mean, he does in example after example. And, but along that same vein, and this is meant to be an encouragement, brothers and sisters. It is an encouragement. I do my best to be able to lift up the body. I do my best to be able to try to get out there and be encouraging. That's what I want to do. But there are those groups, those, uh, those certain people or organizations or whatever that hold tenaciously like they were you know, just at the very end of a rope, and they're not about to let go of everything that they have been taught. And 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 it's it's just really difficult. I encourage you to be open to the spirit to speak to you, because I, I really think that the base reason for this is fear. And fear is not of God. And, and I just I just want to be able to tell you uh, it's, it's not that. But here's the question that we're discussing. Are any of the righteous going to be left behind after the pre-tribulation harvest of the bride? And I think that what I'm going to be able to show, hold on a minute. Uh, what I'm going to be able to show is that, yes, unfortunately, that's that's the case. And I, I've been trying to say, so there are, and I, I just will never forget this. I had one person uh, that had made a comment one time that uh, I had said that Jesus is not going to drag you kicking and screaming into a pre-tribulational rapture. And, and bless her heart, she said, oh, yes, he will. Whether or not, they're going to go whether they want to or not. And I'm thinking, do you realize what you just said? He's not going to do that for anyone to be saved. Why is he going to do this when this is not even a salvation issue? And that's another thing I want to be able to point out. This is not a salvation issue. And so for those folks that are trying to attach it to salvation, that is a mistake. So in other words, I, I'm, I'm saying you can't do that. That is not rightly dividing the word. Uh, and, and it just, it really is difficult. But this is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to show you from God's word and I'm going to leave it to you, brothers and sisters and those watching. And I encourage you, please watch till the end of this and don't just because I've, I've seen a number. I, it's just really also also just mind boggling to me that what what it appears is that we have these people that will just surge over the Internet and they will, if they see any trigger words, or it's trigger words for them, pre-tribulation rapture, and then they, they zoom in on there and they start unliking videos and they start making horrid comments and telling you about how bad you are and that sort of thing. But that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is make a point for those people too. You don't have to be left behind. So let's, let's talk about how is it possible? How is it possible that any just people could be left behind? It, it just does not seem right, does it? So let me, let's, let's cover this. What I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, 
I'm going to start in Genesis chapter six, and I'm going to show you what people God wants to go. Let's let's start this. So, and and this is the interesting. So when we look at Genesis chapter six, I'm I'm just going to laser focus in on verse eighteen, and this is what it says. But with thee, this is Noah, I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wives with thee. Now, let me stop there for just a minute. Let's, let's, let's just parse this. So what has happened? Father God has established a covenant, an unbreakable covenant with Noah because he found Noah righteous. Now, but what is he saying? He's not just taking Noah, right? He's saying that not only are you, Noah, going to be saved, but as part of this covenant, it's going to be you, your sons, your wife, and your son's wives. That means, you know, the son-in-laws, the daughter-in-laws, the that part of the extended family. And one of the points that I'm wanting to make out of here is the, uh, the principle of first mention. And that's when something is actually... Uh, it is actually mentioned in the Bible the first time it establishes a principle, right? And so we can go from this first mention and we can see in other instances what that is like, what that means. So we, I'm just going to jump right to Genesis chapter 7. And, and uh, interestingly, Genesis 7, chapter 7, verse 7. Hmm, 7, 7, 7. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his son's wife with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Now, in this particular instance, all of them went in. Everything, everyone that he's established the covenant when, uh, uh, with went in. Okay, and why did they go in? Because of the waters of the flood. So in other words, Noah, who's the preacher of righteousness in this instance, tells them and they believe him and they go into the ark with him and they are saved, right? So let's, all right. So I'm going to jump to the very next place where we've got this because remember, there's a whole lot, I, I, I think that it's probably well known uh, how the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, as in the days of Noah, you know, uh, marrying, giving into marriage. I think that's very, I'm not going to go into that right now. That's not the point. But, uh, and then he says, as in the days of Lot, right? So he's giving two particular points. And what we see in both Noah and Lot is that he removes the just before he wreaks out vengeance or wrath on the world. So, but let's, and it's also something that God wants us to know about in advance so we can determine that, right? And follow with me, follow with me. I'm going to show you in the scripture. So turn to Genesis <coughs> chapter 18 and verse 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham this thing which I do? Again, we have another first mention. This is God saying, and he's pointing out to us, he's got a covenant with Abraham. He's already done that previously. And so he's saying with his covenanted people, he is not going to do this thing without letting them know. Okay. But let's, uh, let me follow down because I don't want to get off track here. Let's see down in verse 22, Genesis 18, verse 22. 
And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now, this, so the point I'm trying to make here is remember how I pointed out there's no chapters. That's not like there are individual stories that you can separate from something else. They're all connected together. And in this one, we see these men, which we know are angels and the angel of the Lord himself. It's actually the Lord. And it says, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. So they went directly from being with Abraham to Sodom. So that's where we're going with this, right? In verse 23, and Abraham drew near, praise you, Lord, and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? And what I want to also kind of point out here, who is interceding here? It's Abraham. It's not God. He's, he's actually pointed out to Abraham that he's going to uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And we know the story as he goes through, per adventure, if there's 50 righteous in the city, will you also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? And uh, uh, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes, right? So he's clearly said that. Now, here's what I also want to point out is if he had stopped right there, if Abraham had stopped, then what would be the case that if there were 49 righteous in the city, then based on the word, this is his word, he would have destroyed the city. But we've got Abraham and he is going through and he's interceding and he's whittling this down, right? And he gets all the way down to 10. And he just keep, oh, you know, more and more. And each time that Abraham asks, the Lord says yes. He never says no. He always says yes, right? And so let's jump over to verse 32. And, it's, and he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Now, I want to hold on to this, folks. And this, this tells you, I, I think what this really, what we really see out of this is two very big issues. One, prayer. Prayer gets answered. God answers prayer. And two, God is merciful. He's merciful. But he waits for us to ask. In very, in, he waits for us to ask. And follow me, follow me. He's not going to do anything except to the wicked apart from us in our humble asking of him to do so. And... Uh, so then that's what we get then from Genesis chapter 18. So I want to then, let's go to Genesis chapter 19. Remember, it's just one continuing narrative, and that's what we're going to see here. <coughs> and Genesis 19, verse 1, and there came two angels to Sodom at even. It's the same two that we just saw earlier that said that they had turned their faces towards Sodom, right? So here they are. So they've just been talked to by Abraham and he's whittled things down to 10. And what he hasn't done 
is he hasn't, I, I firmly believe that if he had asked them to, if there had been one, he would, he could have asked them if there's just one, don't destroy it. And he would, God would have done it. Every single instance in here that he did, one, 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 one. Every single time he asked, he uh, then the Lord said yes. He didn't say no any single one of these times, right? All right, so here we are in Genesis 19, uh, and there came the two angels from, uh, to Sodom at even. And I want to go ahead and start, <coughs> at, <coughs> excuse me, at verse 12. And it said, and the men said unto Lot, hast thou here any besides, meaning any others besides you? Son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou has in the city, bring them out of this place. Now, remember the first mention, we, we went there, talked about Noah, and we talked about the you know, the uh, son-in-laws, the daughter-in-laws, and, uh, uh, you know, husband and the wife. And so here we've got the same thing. So they're asking him, are there any here besides that we can go ahead and take? So let's continue. For we will destroy this place because of the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters. Now, that's we know that, you know, in the other part, uh, it says that, uh, he says that they're virgins. And yes, that's because they were legally married, right? So they were sons-in-law. They were legally married, but they haven't had the wedding ceremony yet and consummated the marriage. So they were still virgins. So uh, that's, that's why we have that. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. All right, so here we've got Lot. He's doing like Noah. He's telling his sons-in-laws that, you know, that this, ha this place is going to be destroyed. Just like Noah is saying, this whole place is going to be destroyed. But in Noah's instance, they all listen to him. But what happens here? But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. What does that mean? They were going, they basically thought he was a nutcase. Well, they all thought uh, that he was a nutcase Noah, too. You know, a flood, you're going to build this ark. Are you serious? And so, but here in this instance, I want to point out, wait, wait, please listen. This is the, this is just the sur surface understanding of this. And it seems rather open. You don't have to like twist the scriptures. It says it specifically here. So he went and talked to the sons-in-law because that's part of what they would have had uh, included out of the 10 righteous, you see. And they thought he mocked them. Ah, oh, you're such an idiot. Which is a lot of times what we get from our brothers and sisters here when we talk about Jesus going to open up the door and he's going to take us to be with him, to be wed with him, to, to have that union. And, and they, they just are vociferously against it. Oh, you, you know, I, I can't believe you pre-tribbers are like, you know, and that type of thing. We've all seen it. But I'm trying to, this is an encouragement because if you actually listen, wait a minute, we've got two versions here, right? Noah's uh, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, they listened, but here with Lot, they didn't listen. They thought there was mocking going on. And so he went, told them, they didn't listen. And when the morning arose, this is verse 15, then the angels hastened Lot saying, arise, 
take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here in, in your house, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. It's going to be destroyed by fire, right? That's another key that we're going to get into here in a second. So he went and talked to the sons-in-laws. They said, no, but could they have gone? Yes, yes, they could have. He went and told them, they said, no, but you, so, but here's something very interesting. And while he lingered, so we've got Lot, he's saying, well, let's make sure we get this and go there. Maybe I can talk to them a little more. So what did they do? It says the men laid hold upon his hand and they reached out, grabbed him and upon the hand of his wife, boom, grab that. And the two daughters, which are here, get, grab those two daughters and let's go. We got to go, folks. We can't wait any longer. And uh, so this is, this is really a key phrase out of verse 16. The Lord being merciful unto him. Lord's merciful. Sorry. And they brought him forth and set him without the city, outside of the city. So, so what do we see here? I'm sorry. Our God is merciful. I, I get, it, it bothers me sometimes when you get some people, they, they make our Abba Father, they make him out to be such an angry, authoritative figure that just wants to beat and pound. And he loves you. He loves you more than you could possibly imagine. And he wants you to go with him. He wants you to go, but he's not going to make you go. And here in this instance, who did we have? We had sons-in-laws that could have gone. And they chose not to. That's what free will is all about. And again, I will point out, he does the same thing with salvation. Even though this, this is not about salvation, we're not talking about the salvation issue. Salvation is a free gift, and he gives that freely. This is not that. So, but the same way he's not going to force you to accept him any more than he's going to force you to go with him and i'm just saying you know that there it is in in his own word i mean we can see that but are we finished yet no there's more in verse 26 ha ah, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. <clears throat> so what do we see out of that? I think it, if we look at that, she was left behind. She actually started, but this is, <laughs> this is you know, when we look at that, we go like, hmm, I see that. But the wife looked back. And what that means is that that she longed for what she was leaving behind. And what does this tell me? Even though she had the opportunity and she started to go, she was left behind because she couldn't let go of things in this life. And, you know, we have another scripture that tells us not to be you know, overrun by the cares of this life. This is, this is what happened to her. She couldn't imagine leaving that life behind. And so consequently, she, she died as a result. She was behind him. She wasn't with him. And so that's, I think that's clear too. Not, you've got to be able to just set everything in this life. There is nothing here in comparison to what Jesus has for us in heaven. Okay. And so I, I just really don't say, do I have something else that I wanted to say out of? Yes. Okay. No. All right. So now, we're thinking like, is that it, Wayne? Nope. 
I want to give you at least three, three witnesses. There are more, but I just want to give you these three. And it's, it's right at the beginning. So it's not like something that we're coming up with, as many would like to say, something that was never in the Bible. So first, let's switch over to Joshua chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, and they came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. So you can kind of see they're, they're thinking, if, if you think about it, you're thinking like, what is going to be a safe place if you're a spy that people are not going to come looking for you? Well, in a prostitute's house, there's not they're not going to be necessarily looking there, at least you're hoping. And so they lodge there. But let's go down to verse nine. This is so cool. And she said unto the men, wow, that, I, hold on. To, I'm sorry. This is, this is big, powerful for me. I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. <clears throat> for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. Now, why is that a big deal? That's a completely other, uh, other study, but those were giants. Why, why are they mentioning these two kings? Og was a king of giants. And that's, that's where we get, like, we're grasshoppers in their sight. They're huge. They're massive. Just, oh, no, we can't do that. But we know that's uh, what they did. They destroyed them. So it was a huge thing. You're going to destroy them. And we just, we heard about how, you know, you dried up the Red Sea for you. And then in verse 11, and as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Here's the key. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Verse 12. Now, therefore, so she's recognized the God of Israel is God. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. Now, listen what she asks for. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. But she went for the big brass ring. She wasn't holding anything back. I want all of my people, right? And the men answered her, verse 14, our life for yours. If ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Let's go down to verse 18. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread, which is a symbol of the blood, right? In the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home into thee. Now, I want to point something else here. Where is she supposed to bring all of these people? home unto thee. So in other words, we, when you look at this, and I imagine this, this is what my uh, eye is looking at inside. She lives on the wall, but we know that the walls came down, right? All of the walls came down. And I used to think, how is the whole armies 
of Israel going to know that she is the one. So she's supposed to bring all of her family, all of their belongings into her house. And follow me a minute. She then, if they imagine how all of the walls come crumbling down, except one section that looks just like a tower. And here's her window up at the top with this scarlet cord hanging down. They go, oh, there she is. <laughs> you know, it's, it really is that kind of thing. So everyone comes in there and she and everyone she asked for was saved, right? And we know that, uh, you know, from the lineage of, of Rahab, then that uh, we have uh, uh, Jesus comes from that lineage. Uh, let's go to Joshua 6. I want to continue this for a minute. In Joshua 6, verse 17, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. And so here, I, I actually think about Isaiah chapter 26, come into her, my people, right? So we're, we're gonna come into the tower, right? And, and in this tower, we're gonna be closed in and protected away from this judgment uh, that is uh, coming down below them. So all of the, uh, <clears throat> all of the, Walls come down and everything else, and they're still up there. I think that that is really good. So let's continue. In verse 21, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young. <coughs> Sorry, folks. I'm not going to stop. Young and old, and ox and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. Everyone. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out the, the woman and all that she has, and ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all of her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. So everyone that she asked for, they were able to, to, uh, to miss this judgment. In verse 25, and that's where I'll stop, and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had, and she dwelt in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So in other words, when you trust in the Lord, you will be delivered from the wrath to come. And it's, it, it, it truly is that. I, I just want to uh, look at this one thing, and this is what I'll just want to end with. And that is, I want to look again at Luke 21, 36. I've mentioned it before on several occasions, but I want to highlight this point here. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. What did we talk about prayer a moment ago? God answers prayer. But it also says that you have to recognize he is God, just like Rahab, she recognized he's God. She was not afraid to ask for what she wanted. But we see that out of all of this, you are not guaranteed to be. So in other words, we look back at 
uh, what happened there in Lot. If Lot's sons-in-law, if they were considered just such that they were allowed and was even asked to come out, they decided themselves that they were not going to leave. God honors their requests as well. Is it unmerciful of God to leave that choice in their own hands? I, I, I say it's not. <coughs> but what I would also say is that uh, what we have here is we just have we have such a very short time. And I'm asking all of you, this, this is a great, great thing for all of us because um, what we have here is the, uh, I don't seem to be getting any more texts. I don't know what's going on here. Um, uh, I, I just really think that what's going on here uh, is that we are going to be gone. We are going to be gone. And yes, free will is a precious gift. It is so precious. And he is not going to be, he's not going to take that away from you. How precious is that? He's telling you that he's coming for you. And he has made a marriage contract with you. Like I think the, the big important point here is that like similar to the Jewish wedding, we're married already. We're married already. We just haven't consummated that marriage yet. And that's what happens at the rapture. That's what happens. We go into the bridal chamber for seven days, and that equates, according to God, a year for a day. So that's for seven years. And, and that happens before, just like here in Noah, just like here in Sodom and Gomorrah, in Lot's case, before judgment is poured out on the wicked. But I, I just want... I, I hope that you see, and this is not, this is an encouraging message, please understand, that God answers prayers. So if you're not praying to pray always to escape all that is about to happen, that you may stand before the Son of Man, then how can he answer that prayer? I just, I really encourage you to do that. I really encourage you to do that. He is coming so soon now, and this is, I truly believe, one of the last opportunities that we have to be uh, ready for and looking for our glorious heavenly bridegroom, which is just about to appear in any moment. And I just encourage you, brothers and sisters, those that understand that he's coming before the tribulation, those that understand that he is going to have a mid-tribulation harvest and a post-tribulation. If, if you are just now and you believe in Jesus now, that does not mean, and I hope I've been able to show that, I encourage you, read this yourself. These are I had one person that was all, and you and you can recognize this. Show me one verse, one verse. It does not say it anywhere in the Bible. Show me one verse. Folks, I am showing chapter after chapter after chapter. So if, if, if you are really unwilling to look, if you're really unwilling to be a Berean and check those, I'm not, I'm not asking you to take my word for it. I'm asking you to get in God's word Look these things up yourselves and pray. I pray that the Holy Spirit will, will open your eyes to revelation that you can see that uh, what, what his word means. 
uh, Bucket Hyacinth uh, had actually mentioned in one of his comments, and I agree with this, that, you know, that it's almost as if this message is hidden in plain sight and it has been there for 2000 years. Well, I agree. I agree. It's, it's always been there. But remember that according to Daniel, he was supposed to shut up this book about the time of the end. And at the time of the end, it would be open. And I think that is exactly what's happening now is open to that book and all of these revelations are coming out in preparation for this it's it's just amazing that that is the case uh and i encourage you not you know let go hold let go of this vice grip that you have from all of these people this is the way i've been taught and we've taught this for hundreds of years okay if, if, you know, if that's the case, if the Lord is opening up his book at the time of the end, how is any of that going to be helpful for you if you're not going to listen? If you're not going to listen, I, I just encourage you to do that. Now, I also understand that God is sovereign and he has a plan for everyone. And so if, if that plan is for you, I've heard of uh, several people, myself, that actually want to stay here. They believe that there's a pre-tribulational rapture, but they want to stay here. And they think that they can be helpful in that time. And, and I'm, I'm just thinking God's going to honor that. He's not going to force that person, those people, to come out. No, no, no not going to do it. No, they're asking him in with the greatest of, uh, you know, what, what are they, they, they really want to be able to do what they feel is going to be a work for the Lord. Now, I personally, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. It doesn't work for me. I have set everything down and I encourage everyone watching this to do the same. And if, if there's anyone that still has, uh, and I hate to say it, I, I just don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. If anyone who is watching this and they are left behind, whether it's by choice or whether it's because they choose not to, to believe or to pray for this, then I am, I, I, I'm saying, God bless you. God bless you right? If, if you belong to the Lord, it doesn't matter in which group you are in, God is going to honor that. And I should also say as one last point that uh, I, being a member of the bride is a reward. It's a reward. It's not a gift, okay? It's a reward. And it's a reward for those that want so desperately just, and that's me, so desperately to be part of that marriage. All of you, Jesus, for all of me, all of you, for all of me, take it all. And let me have all of you. I am going to be like Rahab in that I'm going to ask for everything, all that you have. I want it all. And I, I know just like Elisha, when he asked for a double portion and Elijah says, yeah, you have asked a hard thing. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, it may be a hard thing, I wanna ask because the Lord can't honor that request unless you ask, okay? So brothers and sisters, I love you all. I really, really do. And it is very important to me that I am not misleading, that I am I'm just showing you what the word of God says and asking you to get in, verify, look at this, be that Berean that searched out the word to find out if these things are true and let the Holy Spirit work on you. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what this is all about. And on that note, 
brothers and sisters. I love you all. And I just, I, I can't wait to meet each and every one of you, all of my family members in heaven, which is going to be so soon now. God bless you all. And, uh, and we'll talk later. All right. Bye-bye now.